Sales and in fact, you spoke about energy as one of your picks. So let's focus on the energy space itself. So Sloan Energy, well, that's a stock in focus. We're joined by Mr. Himanshu Modi, the uh, group uh, CFO of the company. Uh, hi, Himanshu, morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, you'll have done a rights issue and you've called for the remaining money as well. So give us a couple of details. One is your interest cost has come down to, I think, sub 90 crores in the past quarter from close to around 190 crores. So that's good news. What does the debt come down to? If you could give us a target out there. And on a yearly basis, what is the interest cost you can guide for? So good morning to you. Uh, so as you rightly said, we've called for the second and the final tranche of rights issue on Friday at our Securities Issuance Committee. Um, so the record date for that would be 2nd March and uh, the subscription window would be 9th March to 23rd March. Uh, so that second and final tranche is for another 600 crores, uh, of which uh, we are going to use on a 317 crores towards debt repayment and the re balance will be used for our own capex and working capital requirements um, our debt okay. uh, net debt as on uh, 31st december 22 uh, was about 2050 crores so with the rights issue tranche coming in and debt going down further in addition to our scheduled repayment uh, we're looking at a net debt of close to about 1700 crores uh, with the financial year end Okay, All right. so 1,700 crores from 2,050 crores, right? That's right, yes. What does it mean in terms of an interest payment? Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, your interest payment was around 1,300 crores per year. Now, that's come down drastically. For FI24, given that you have some money that's coming in, what does the interest cost come down to? Well, I think uh, interest rates, uh, you know, are, of course, hardening. Uh, so I would say that uh, in the vicinity of about... Uh, with the 1700 odd crore debt in the vicinity of about 200 crores is what the interest cost should be for FY24. All right. Uh, Imanju, hi, good morning. Could you tell us, uh, you know, you, you have a, a sizable sort of order backlog, right? Uh, what proportion of it is from the Adani group? Uh, and uh, could you tell us, given the uh, troubles uh, there that we've seen over the last one month, one month plus, uh, have you seen any movement in that? Has, has there been any cancellations, uh, any deferment, etc.? So our current order book is roughly about uh, 780 megawatts. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and of that, uh, uh, none of it is from the Adani Group. Uh, we do have some existing orders, uh, but at an operating level, uh, we haven't seen any hitch or any hurdles in being able to service that at both ends, uh, even from the customer end, even at our end. So. You know, whilst I'd not like to comment on the speculation, but from an operational perspective, uh, it's life as usual for us. So in the wind energy space, you have an order book of uh, around 780 megawatts right now, as you said. Uh, so uh, nothing from the Adani group is what you're saying? That's right. Out of that 780, it's nothing from the Adani group. But they were your customers, right? They were, so whatever orders we had, a large part of those have been serviced out in FY23 itself. Okay, and the payment has come in in, in entirety? Yes, I mean, there are trans-linked payments. So, you know, while mm -hmm. as policy, we will not talk about specific audit details, but sure. uh, a large part of the payments have been received. And as I said, operationally, we are not seeing any hurdles there. Okay, got that. So can you tell us, you know, th this whole renewable energy, wind energy space is a big focus area for the government. Uh, so what kind of order visibility do you have over the next one to two years? How much do you think you could grow this wind energy business? So order visibility is a tough one uh, to put a number at it. Uh, we certainly have a very strong order pipeline under uh, negotiation with uh, various customers. Um, as you're also aware, the MNRE uh, just announced uh, uh, policy to do 8 gigawatts of wind per annum. Now, you know, that's, of course, a very welcome move. Uh, the reverse bidding in the wind sector has been discontinued, which was bought in 2017. Uh, so, obviously, the all the policy tailwinds are now available to the industry. Uh, and from a Suzlon perspective, we are very well set to capitalize on that uh, with our uh, balance sheet woes behind us now. All right, Manchu, final question before we let you go. You've given us the key numbers. Your enterprise value will be close to 10,000 crores, the market capitalization plus your debt uh, put it together. What is the EBITDA number? Because that will be the other key variable uh, from year on. At the nine-month mark, well, uh, pre-Forex, I think it's around 600 crores odd. For FI24 and FI25, given the thrust of the government on this, the space that you're working in and given the measures that you all have taken, what could be the rough EBITDA number? 
So again, uh, very difficult for me to give you an EBITDA number because it depends on the uh, amount of order intake. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if, as I said, uh, we are looking at 8 gigawatts per annum as an uh, industry practice. Uh, and historically, Suzlon has been able to maintain about one third of its market share uh, over the years. Uh, and there's no reason why we should be able to continue to do the same uh, going forward. Uh, with that, of course, uh, we should be looking at uh, healthy order book top line and therefore EBITDA numbers. Uh, for FY23, uh, as you rightly said, nine months, we've had an EBITDA of about 600 crores approximately. So if you annualize that, we'll be at about 800 crores for FY23 on an annualized basis. But what about FY24? Can you do 250 crores per quarter? A tough one to give me a, give you a sort of directional, but uh, I think fingers crossed, uh, you know, we should be able to certainly outperform FY23. Okay. okay. Hey, Manshu, uh, would you, I mean, as you're saying, you're out of that uh, sort of debt issue, etc. I mean, you're getting out of it now. Uh, so, and you're doing well, a third of a, uh, one-third market share, right, in the, in the sector that you operate in, and no reason why you should not maintain that. In terms of right. potential M&A or approaches, uh, that has been something which is discussed on and off. Would you be open to offers? Have there been offers? Uh, could you talk about that? So again, uh, this is, you know, largely uh, speculation. Uh, you know, I think uh, after the unfortunate event of uh, losing Mr. Tanti on 1st October last year, uh, uh, there has been a strong succession plan in place uh, from the family side, from the management side. Uh, so there is no such discussion actively going on either currently or in the past. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. Appreciate your thoughts and 